Peter, I'm, I'm not going to cover the part where you're getting harassed, which I can totally relate to you on that um, subject, because I have also been online harassed, not probably to the level that you have, um, but pretty significantly. They actually planted a dude in my house as um, an activist on a Bernie journey. And I had to kick him out of my house, and then he started making videos about me, saying some horrible lies about me. So I get you there, but I do want to cover this portion of the story, and I want to point out, I don't know if you've made this connection yet, but it, um, there's a cycle. There's a cycle to how Colleen is responding to these allegations against her. And it seems like every two weeks or something, maybe every week or every two weeks, uh, somebody comes out and tries to defend her. They're testing the waters. They're trying to figure out, like, how do we get her back, right? Like, how do we get her back? So it's almost like, um, like if I was imagining how uh, her disaster team is working with her right now, it's like they're having weekly staff meetings and saying, what can we do now? Um, well, why don't we put out a Variety Fair article? <laughs> oh, okay, that didn't work out very well for us. Um, well, well, okay, 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 okay. Uh, why don't we see if we can get her best friend, Corey, to put out like some thirst bait shit on Instagram, right? Well, that didn't quite work out either. I have never heard of this JoJo person, but apparently you all have. Like, obviously she has a high level of LGBTQIA following, which I don't get. I don't get, you guys. I do not get it. Because, you know, um, I have um, a couple of relatives that are gay. And I have grown up, you know, going to performing arts magnets. So three of the students at my school um, transformed and changed genders. I've had this experience with my, my son as well. His He's had friends who have changed genders. Um, I'm... I have been asked to attend the Lavender Dems Club to help vote in certain people into leadership roles. So it's not like I'm unfamiliar with the community, right? Um, but I am unfamiliar with the interest in Colleen Ballinger. I, I don't get it. I don't get this fascination with mean girls. I don't get it. So let's go back, but like, um, you, you, you talk about this other subject for so long that I don't know exactly where it starts. She's our best friend okay. and she comes out and slams the victims okay, hold on. of Colleen Balance. Yada, yada. Um, but you know, that's something my mom used to always say, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. By the way, you're only two years older than me. And I'm fairly sure that yada, yada, yada comes from Yogi Bear. Think back on it. Think back on it. I'm fairly certain that's where it comes from. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, um, you know, and all these people are saying that she's a good representative of the LGBTQIA plus community. Why? Because she came out? I mean, I even said that, right? Like, people are... I, I don't know if I said she was a good representation. I think I probably did say that, right? Because I felt like her background kind of gave her the platform to be a good representative because she was, like, really non-problematic and she had come from Dance Moms and made $80 million off those bows. Now, let's just think about that for a second, okay? You're 20 years old and you've made $80 million. She says that on the podcast off of bows mm -hmm. her brand did she refers to herself as a brand i mean i know she's a brand because you can get her in walmart meyer target everywhere but at 20 she doesn't have a business degree yet so she doesn't fully understand what she's talking about right 
or else I think Dollar Store has her buzz. I understand that you're a brand, but at 20 years old to refer to yourself as a brand, okay, it's kind of so weird to me, like, I don't know, you know, and she's like, I mean, I was always, like, really upset because I never went to football games in high school, but then I got to go to Super Bowl. Oh. Girl, you're literally a child star, okay, and we already know how that turns out in 20 years. By the way, that's so expensive. That's, it's so expensive just to go to a regular football game. The only time I've ever attended a football game was through a work experience where they happened to have, um, they had a suite, right? And so uh, I was at the very last minute told that I could go down there and I missed the entire first quarter of the game because of traffic. Um, I know I go on tangents too, so does Peter, he does as well. Uh, and it took me two and a half hours to get from South Orange County to San Diego to watch this Chargers game. They did win though. They did win. We get we we got to see some um, some scores. I guess is what they call it. I'm not really that big into football, you guys. All right, so I'm just going to tell you, you might want to read the stories, okay, about all the people that were on that TV show, Different st Strokes, and all that kind of stuff, okay? It doesn't turn out pretty. I'm just telling you right now, okay? Now, facts of life, those girls did okay. You take the good, you take the bad, you take it all, and they, but they had Mrs. Garrett, you know? Like, fucking A, they had Mrs. Garrett. You can't go wrong with Mrs. Garrett, okay? But anyway, um... Peter Blair was on Survivor. Blair, I can't remember, what, Lisa something? Um, Blair ended up on Survivor, and she actually got really far in the game. I think she made it to the final three, um, and her eyebrows got so drippy, dude. It was like she had two sets of eyebrows going on. It was very bizarre because she couldn't, obviously you can't get like your salon waxing and shit. <laughs> she, like, she had the most bizarre eyebrows ever. Look it up, dude. So, well, I guess that Blair kind of turned into like a real religious nut job, didn't she? There, I said it. Come for me. You're coming kind of for Blair's religion. I, yeah, I am. I was a Joe fan the whole time, okay? So anyway, well, actually I was a Tootie and Natalie fan. <laughs> I did. I love them so much. What was her name? Something Natalie. Was that? No, that wasn't her real. That was no, her real name. Right. Something Cone. What was her name on the show? Anyway, it doesn't. Her. That was her. That was her name on the show. I don't remember what her actual name is. That was her. That was her character name, and it was it was Natalie and Tootie. And um, if you remember correctly, Peter, <laughs> you're only two years older than me. This is so good. Um, they started off in like a private high school and then they moved into this other location where Mrs. Garrett was like running a cafeteria or something, something like that. And they had this PSA episode where like the next door neighbor was leaving her daughter alone in the middle of the day she was a latchkey kid and there was a fire in the building and they had to go save her remember they used to have all the psa episodes back in the 80s peter matter but tootie later kim field she ended up being on the real Housewives of atlanta for one season she couldn't handle it she really couldn't handle it she thought she was too classy and too bougie for them i mean they let her have it can you didn't she also didn't um didn't tootie also try and do big brother wasn't that a thing, too, or am I thinking of another black actress? I can't remember. You more let her have it on that show. I kind of felt bad for her a little bit, too, you know? Because I did love TD and the roller skates. What am I going on about? But anyway, JoJo, you might want to look into, like, how child stars turn out because it's not pretty, right? Okay, so anyway, no, that's not a threat. I know, seriously, look at Amanda Bynes. That was a disaster, right? I mean, like, there there have been so many terrible cases of child actors ending up with drug addictions or um, ending up, like, I mean, holy crap. There, um, they were so mistreated. 
and they lost their childhood. So they started acting out in some terrible ways, you know? I'm just giving you some information. I feel like I have to clear that up now, like what are threats and what aren't threats. God. What is this fucking channel turned into? Anyway, so <laughs> I'm watching this podcast like this. So bored, right? It was so boring. It was the most boring podcast in the entire world. Howie Mandel has all these problematic people on there, but then he, like, asks some questions about the problematic situation for literally, like, two minutes. Like, you have JoJo Siwa, who is Colleen Ballinger's biggest supporter. I honestly am more surprised at Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel is still out there. <laughs> I'm surprised he still exists. Because I haven't heard of him since like 20 years ago when he was doing voiceover for computer games. I'm so c confused by this. And her sister, Rachel Ballinger, she even says on the podcast that she just went to Australia with her for two weeks. She's her best friend. And she comes out and slams the victims of Colleen Ballinger and basically accuses them of lying. And you don't ask her any more questions about that. She comes out and says that she was friends with Colleen Ballinger at 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And you don't question that. When you're sitting there saying things about your own daughter and her wanting to be like in the entertainment field and you question that, but you don't think there's anything weird. Now, I did the math, okay? JoJo Siwa, the time that she was 12 years old, Colleen Ballinger was 28 years old. JoJo Siwa says, and we became friends. She says that in the podcast, okay? Can y'all just think back about when you were 28 years old? Now, when I was 28 years old. Yeah, I actually dropped a comment on um, Peter's live stream about this. Um, because at 28 years old, that would have been 2002 for me. I was um, volunteering in my son's school. I was an IEP advocate, um, like the neighborhood parents would call me for advice on how to advocate for their children's IEPs. I was, um, I don't know if I was quite committee chair yet. I might have just been the webmaster of the Cub Scout pack that I was um, volunteering for at that point and my son was also in diving so I had volunteer activities there um, but there is not a single person under the age of 18 that I would have considered a friend that wouldn't have happened Colleen <laughs> oh my god even you at that point consider yourself a mom you are a um, authority figure. You are helping to supervise activities. You are making sure that the children are safe. It is not, oh, you're my friend. Let's have conversations. No, 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 no. It's okay, son, you want to have a, a friend come and spend the night at the house? Cool. You guys sleep in the um, our living room, and I will check in on you occasionally to make sure that you haven't done anything crazy to my 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 house. You know, that's how it goes. I was in my second relationship. Um, I think we had just gotten back from going to St. Lucia on our trip. I was at that time, um, I was working in a treatment facility. I was at that time, let's see, 28, I was uh, five and a half years sober. I was going out to dinner with other couples. Mm -hmm. We were going to the casino on weekend. Mm -hmm. On the weekends, I went hanging out with no 12 year old. Yeah, well, you also don't have kids, right? So you don't have to explain away like your interactions with children at that point because this is like 2000 for you it was 2002 for me right so you don't have to explain like there's no reason that you should have had to explain something like that away whereas me i was constantly like looking at the boy scout rules of you got to have at least two kids with you at all times so that 
if somebody, ha you know, has a complaint, you have another witness. Like, w we had, like, rules around the way that we managed the children that, that we were around. And there was no, oh, you're my friend. You're my friend. You could call me and we can just have conversations. It's going to be fine. It's all good. All good. No. 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 Not even, like, okay. Not even recently when I was a Bernie victory captain and I had teen teenagers um, show up to Canvas and to phone bank and stuff like that. The, and some of them would call me and want like some coaching. They'd want some advice. Uh, there was no, oh, you're my friend. No, it was, hey, here's some organizations you can work with. Um, here are some job opportunities here. It, it, like it, it I, I can't even fathom trying to corrupt even teenagers, you know, that are like on the verge of becoming adults. I, I can't even imagine doing that to kids. And here Colleen was doing it on a daily basis. I'm sorry. Okay, I wasn't. I wasn't asking no 12-year-olds to be my girlfriends, okay? Listen, I wasn't. I wasn't calling up 12-year-olds to be like, you want to drive around the car and smoke cigarettes and have fountain pops? I wasn't, okay? Like, that is so weirdly to me. And the fact that JoJo stands there or sits there on this couch and says it and thinks there's nothing weird about it, when Colleen Ballinger was literally accused of having inappropriate relationships with minors, and she literally just kind of proves it, okay? That Colleen Ballinger and JoJo Siwa called each other friends when JoJo Siwa was 12. Now, I'm just, I'm, I'm literally putting this... Yeah, but Adam thought he was friends with her, too. And even though, um, uh, once his face got canceled... The other guy that that accused her ex-husband Josh, he also was underage when it when the relationship with Colleen Ballinger started, and he started acting as an agent for her to throw down her husband, just like she asked she asked Adam to do the same thing. Out there, okay. You know, like, as a person in recovery, I mean, I know 21-year-old, 22-year-olds, okay, that I'm friendly with in recovery. I don't even know that I would call them my friends, okay? But... Acquaintances. <laughs> who out there... Can somebody raise your hand, please, if you are 28 years old, literally 28 years old, and you have a good friend, a good friend, okay, that you call up on the phone every day, and you hang out and go shopping with, and you tell your marital problems to, and you, like, you consider them your ride or die. That and they're not... A family member it's not like a cousin it's not a brother or sister this is somebody outside of your actual familial relationships that you're just like I mean do you realize how inappropriate that is it's 12 years old can you raise your hand out there please the fact that Jojo Siwa even thinks that there's anything okay with that should tell us the maturity level of Jojo Siwa. And then they go on to talk about how mature she is. You're so mature because you had all these adult friends when you were 12 years old. No, girl. Like, that's weird, okay? Maybe you should have been going to high school football games. I'm just saying. Maybe you should have been hanging out with kids your own age, okay? I'm just saying. You know, then she gets... It stops. Then she cites this whole thing about the way that she met Colleen Ballinger was because four of the girls on Dance Moms were invited to Todrick Hall's party where he surprised them with Colleen Ballinger, but she and Nia weren't invited, and Colleen Ballinger saw in the episode how upset they were that they weren't invited, and uh, so then uh, she like went out to dinner with Nia and her and her, their, their moms. Girl... Now, I don't know if you're friends with Todrick Hall today, but you might have missed a bullet there, okay? Todrick Hall is problematic as hell, too. So by 20 years old, you have surrounded yourself by Todrick Hall, James Charles, and Colleen Ballinger, Shane Dawson. You you have, Trisha Paytas, you have literally surrounded yourself by the most problematic people on YouTube. And you said you consider YouTube your job, okay? So your colleagues are the most, your colleagues, your co- <laughs> 
<laughs> Your please. colleagues are the most problematic people on YouTube. Okay. Probably why you don't see anything that's wrong with it. Like when I was in treatment and my counselor said to me, let's talk about your smoke and pot problem. And I said, I don't, I'm not talking about, I'm not here for that. And she goes, what do you mean? And I go, everybody smokes pot. Everybody that I knew smoked pot. Okay. So when everybody around you is problematic, you don't think there's anything wrong with it. Just like I thought there was nothing wrong that everybody that, now listen, I'm talking to, 30 years ago, okay? I know everybody come down to smoke in the mirror. Do you, okay? But I smoked it all day, every day. So whether you guys want to think it's a problem or not, it was a problem for me, okay? I smoked it all day, every day. So anyway, it was a problem for me. It was a pro mostly a problem because I never, like, got arrested for it. It never cost me a lot of money problems because it was cheap and things like that. But that's a whole other story, okay, for another day. But, you know, the reason why I didn't think it was a problem for me was because everybody around me was smoking all day, every day. So when you're surrounded by problematic people, you don't think there's anything problematic about them. So I'm starting to wonder, Jojo Siwa, are you problematic? Now, we already know that Lipstick Nick, because she's surrounding herself and going to movie nights at James Charles' house, and she's been friends with Jeffree Star and Jaclyn Hill and all this kind of stuff. We know she's problematic. We just haven't found out how yet. But trust me, somebody probably will, or she'll expose it herself, right? So, Jojo, I'm wondering if you're problematic, okay? But then they go into this whole thing about how, you know, like, so, so she, they ask, well, first of all, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this and I'm, when it starts getting this Colleen Ballinger thing, which I rewound about three times to make sure I got it right. And I'm like, now I understand that Jojo Siwa has more money than God at 20 years old. And she was on Dance Moms and things like that, you know, where they got paid $10,000, probably $50,000 for a post on Instagram. But why are we listening to this girl? Like, I mean, first of all, why are you listening to me? I am nobody to have an opinion, okay? But, and for all you out there that want to say, well, you said, jo why are we listening to JoJo Siwa? Why are we listening to you? That's a good question. Why the fuck are you listening to me? But you are, and I appreciate it, so thank you. Okay, but now that we've acknowledged why are we listening to Peter Mon, let's acknowledge why are we listening to JoJo Siwa, okay? She was a girl that at night... I'll be real with you, Peter. I had no idea who this chick was until Adam did a video, video uh, about her and then you did a video about her and I have no clue who this chick is because I didn't watch Dance Moms I raised a boy he's not interested in that stuff you know um, I mean he was a straight boy is what I'm saying. <laughs> he was not interested in watching Dance Moms. And um, at the time, I was too wrapped up in work. So, like, I, I have no idea who this woman is, but apparently she's very problematic. I can't even. Nine years old started dancing on Dance Moms, and then she got famous off of followers from Dance Moms on Instagram, okay? Made a YouTube channel the night that she met Colleen Ballinger, okay? Mm. Networked with the right people, came up with a bow brand, and now she's super famous, and we think that she's a superior morality. I, I'm, com I'm confused about this, okay? Why are we listening to JoJo Siwa? Why should we think that JoJo Siwa is anybody that we need to take uh, facts from, Okay. I'm confused by this. But since everybody wants to know, well, the reason why is because she's so f popular and she's so famous. This is the, pro the problem with popularity and fame, right? Is that it's not based on people's philanthropic um, movements. It's not based on the good that they put into the world, okay? It's not based on who they were and who they are now and if they've made changes in growth and if they've demonstrated that and shown that. We're not basing that. We're basing it on the fact that she's got 11 million followers on Instagram, so we should give a shit about what she says. I don't give a fuck what JoJo Siwa has to say, okay? JoJo Siwa don't know shit. And she's a predator protector. Period. And now she's a victim shamer. Okay? Because she said in this, he says, do you, are you still friends with Colleen Ballinger? Uh-huh. Yeah, I sure am. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. First of all, <laughs> let's just go on this whole thing about how she talks about how difficult it was for her to come out in the public eye, which I acknowledge, okay? That it is probably difficult to come out in the public and uh, I and all that kind of stuff in the LGBTQIA plus community, and I appreciate that. And I also No, but, but you do have to kind of take a look at this and look at, like, the timeline of events. And realize they're probably sitting down to staff meetings and being like, okay, what can we do next? What can we do next to try and save your reputation? Right? 
So they do the Variety Fair article. They do the the ukulele video. <laughs> they, do, they have Corey go out with this thirst trap shit. <laughs> And now they have this JoJo chick that most people have probably never heard of before doing an interview with Howie Man Mandel, who probably most people thought was like retired or dead. <laughs> to appreciate that she could have taken that and been a fantastic role model for the LGBTQIA youth, okay? And how difficult that was for her to come out. She could have shared that story and that could have been her platform going forward and talked a lot about that. I know she's already talked a lot about that. Except for that she chose to align herself with James Charles, who is a self-proclaimed predator, and Colin Ballinger that has a lot of, like, all these allegations, right? Okay. So I'm not really sure that I think that JoJo Siwa is a great representation of the gay community based on those facts. I was hoping for her, okay? And I actually went into this interview and I thought, well, I had already been... When I first came out, I thought, is she going to say something against Colleen Ballinger and say she can no longer stand by her? I thought, okay, that would be really interesting, right, if JoJo Siwa finally came out and said that. And I thought, and then she'll, like, unfollow her off of Instagram when this, you know... Um, Nope. When the sin comes out, and then I started getting all these comments, or all these messages after that, and people were saying things like, did you watch this podcast where she shames the victims? And I was like, well, I guess that, sh that ship sailed. <laughs> did you ever watch Wentworth? I love that movie so much, or that show so much, Wentworth. Did you ever watch that? Australia. Interesting country, isn't it? Somebody I was talking for, about earlier is from Brisbane, Australia. But anyway, um, so <laughs> Australia, Wentworth, I love that, right? <laughs> And the one scene, I think it's when Kaz comes in and she's talking to Vera and she says something about, um, she says something about horses and Vera, Vera goes, horses bolt. Vera, she goes, oh no, Kaz says to Vera, Vera, horses bolt. I love that scene so much. Basically like ships sail, but horses bolt. I never heard that before. I was like, oh, I'm going to take, I want to use that. But anyway, basically what Jojo Siwa comes out and says I'm almost at, like, 40 minutes of this video. This is a long-ass video tonight. Yeah, yeah. My husband, like, I kissed him goodnight. I kissed the dog goodnight as I got up for my nap. He was playing his game Township, and he was getting ready to go to bed. And he goes, are you going to... Because I told him I was going to film a video. Oh, the reason why I'm filming a video tonight is because tomorrow's Cousin Fun Day. And my Cousin Fun Day, I mean that my cousin wants to go look at her grandparents' gravestones, okay? Because we're going to do this deep-dive docu-series that then I fell out of interest in, and now she's all wanting to find out all this information about our grandma that went to prison and how our grandfather really died and all this. She's wanting the one to find and she's like, we're going to go. We're going to do it. You're taking Wednesdays off. You're not filming. So if I want to post a video tomorrow, I'm going to have to film it tonight. So I told my husband that. And he goes, are you really going outside right now to film a video? And I go, sure, should I? I'm getting my diet Pepsi right now. Cheers, JoJo Siwa. Mm -hmm. So JoJo Siwa, when he asks her about Colleen Ballinger and the allegations, she says something to the effect of that when the Internet takes a lie and they run with it, Okay. When the internet takes a lie and they run with it, and she has seen this same thing happen to a lot of other people on the internet that were canceled for this. Then she goes in and talks about cancel culture, okay? So, Colleen Ballinger... Does she have any actual examples of people that were falsely accused? Because I do. Like, I've tracked the movement for a lo for, since it started. I've been tracking it since before it started and I've tracked the false allegations and I've tracked the actual allegations where there was some legitimacy, right? When um, my old high school mate, uh, Rose McGowan, came out against Harvey Weinstein, right? She was one of the first people in the second wave of the Me Too movement because the Me Too movement actually began before that. But a lot of people didn't know about it. But there have been false allegations and they're generally political hits. However, <laughs> what's going on with Colleen Ballinger does not seem like a political hit. No, she has no influence other than being an entertainer. You know, nobody gives a shit, right? Um, 
<laughs> it's not even close to the same thing as like an Arturo Carmona situation or um, the, um, the people that were surrounding Julian Assange that were accused of rape so that they could be all taken out. Um, there, there have been lots of occasions in which people have been entrapped or just falsely accused. But uh, that's not what's happening here. <laughs> and it's pretty easy to tell the, like, the difference. Is dealing with these allegations because the victims are lying about it and their lies are being taken and run with. Mm. Well, there was only one liar, and that was Johnny Silvestri, and he lied about Josh David Evans, but you didn't have a problem with that, did you? Because yeah. Colleen Ballinger is your good Judy. So you didn't name Johnny Silvestri and say that he lied about Josh David Evans. No, 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 no. Because that would be giving Josh David Evans... No, that's part of, that was part of one of their staff meetings. There... <laughs> I swear to God, it sounds like they were having staff meetings. And like, okay, this Variety Fair article didn't work. Why don't we send out Johnny Silvestri and have him do an interview with Swoop and have all these false allegations against Colleen Ballinger's ex-husband so that we can deflect we can deflect the blame right is that what's happening here credit and he's about to come out and slam calling ballinger your good judy of that was your best friend when you were 12 years old okay which is weird so that's the first thing okay then she wants to go in here and talk about all these lies and all this kind of stuff and i'm sitting there and i'm watching it and i'm like does she really believe this like, this isn't something that you can take back. You can't get in another interview two weeks down the road and go, yeah, like, I thought they were lies, but I guess they're not. No, there's too much evidence out there, okay? Well, I mean, she's, I don't know who she is, but she's apparently putting herself in the same position as Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, right? That they were called upon to write character letters in favor of Danny Masterson. And then uh, Danny Masterson was sentenced to 30 years to life, right? For raping two women. And there were three accusations, actually, but he only got um, uh, the ju only two of the victims got justice. And um, basically, this chick has put herself in the same position of defending somebody that she shouldn't she should have stayed the fuck out of it right she should have stayed the fuck out of it but here we are Joe Joe Siwa there is way too much evidence out there you know and here's the other thing people crying in the river all this kind of stuff about her coming out I'm sure her coming out was tough she was you know online and all that kind of stuff there have been other people that have come out that have had much more difficult stories, okay? So cry me a river about that. I was bullied for 12 years, okay? And, and, and yes, I do cry a river about it still. Because it's part of my story, right? But, like, I'm, like, sitting there, I'm like, see, you could take that. You could take that story, JoJo, of how difficult it was for you, and you could use that as a foundation to help younger LGBTQIA youth, right? Except for that now you're standing by the side of somebody that has alleged... The, all these allegations and you're also standing by James Charles who's a self-proclaimed predator who he doesn't even ask her about on the podcast like Howie Mandel like wants to be able to say that he asked her he even names the podcast something about hold on a second he names the podcast something about Colleen Ballinger and then literally that's the shortest part of the interview I'm like are you kidding me hold on where is this interview uh, Jojo Siwa opens up about Colleen Ballinger and she opens up about it for two minutes Okay, I mean, seriously, you're going to name the whole podcast now, but you're so scared to ask her the real questions? Put fucking JoJo Siwa on my couch. I'll ask her the questions. 
You know, somebody said on my video or some other video, I think it was my video today, about Jeffree Star, like, do you think that she'll have, because that's another video, okay, because now Trisha Paytas is coming out, because he said something about Trisha Paytas ruining his life and his reputation, and she came out. Trisha Paytas is the only person I know that can make a five-minute or three-minute TikTok. I mean, that TikTok, I've got it saved, so I'll be doing that video. It's, I feel like I just cannot catch, get a day to catch, to catch a break, okay? But I'm going to be doing that video, trust. And Trisha Paytas is the only person that I know that can literally sob on video for three minutes straight on a TikTok that is um, almost unbearable to get through because she says the same thing over and over and over again in circles. And, I mean, she does apologize to this gal, and that part was really nice, all this kind of stuff. And she does, and she doesn't, I mean, I got a lot of opinions about that, okay? And I don't think people are going to like them because the whole thing is so confusing to me, but I do not believe that Trisha Paytas owes an opinion, or owes an apology to Jeffree Star, period, in the story. Okay, I've heard enough behind the scenes that, he has said horrific shit about her. So I understand why she's pissed about it, okay? But, Trisha, I have never seen anybody sob so much in three minutes of a TikTok and not one tear fall from their eye. I'm just saying, girl, okay? Might be why you didn't get them all acting jobs. I'm just saying, okay? Might, you might want to, uh, you know, James Charles was over there on that instant influencer teaching people how to do apologies. You might want to ask him how to cry in a video, too. I don't think he does crying very well, either. Do any of these YouTubers know how to cry? Oh, Colleen Ballinger. She knows how to drop a tear at the drop of a hat, doesn't she? Okay. So, anyway, you might have wanted to drop your 12-year-old friend because what came out after all of this, okay, where JoJo Siwa defends Colleen Ballinger to the grave, okay, and basically victim, she doesn't basically, she does victim shame him and say that it's all based on lies. All the allegations are lies. She never addresses it. I mean, Howie Mandel, like, comes back and asks her again about it, and then she kind of plays it off, and she's just like, yeah, cancel culture is horrible, and I've, I've, ha I've seen this happen to a lot of people I'm friends with, and a lot of people I don't know where they're canceled. Who, girl, are you talking about? Shane Dawson? Evidence. Coin Ballinger? Evidence. Evidence of her talking in group chats. Ooh! Did you say group chats? Now Adam McIntyre has exposed all over Twitter tonight that, um, hold on a second, let me pull it up, that Jojo Siwa was in these problematic, um, hold on a second, let me pull it up, here it is, oh god, Adam McIntyre, he is busy tonight, okay girl, so here he is talking about Trisha Paytas, but he says on here something about, oh where is it at, hold on a second, um, he did a video called Jojo Siwa defends Colleen and calls me a liar, where is the part where he says this about, oh here it is, JoJo being in the GCS alongside Colleen is the cherry on the top, okay? And it's about, and then spill some tea with me, put this on here, and it's a screenshot, okay? You can go over to Adam McIntyre's Twitter, and it's where she's in the group chat, one of the problematic group chats, as a minor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. As a minor, girl. No wonder you didn't think there was anything wrong with what Colleen Ballinger did. You remember when I said that I think Colleen Ballinger is so afraid because there might be somebody that comes out and tells some truth on Colleen Ballinger? Literally, JoJo Siwa, who was defending her, did it and didn't even realize she was doing it, okay? You came out and said that a 28-year-old woman became your best friend when you were 12. That is so fucking weird, okay? Like, that is so fucking... What do you have at 28 years old in common with a 12-year-old? Seriously, okay? Okay, Legos, like, what? what is going on, okay? Were you and Colleen playing Barbies? Were you teaching her how to do dance moves? I mean, I am so confused about this, okay? Like, that is weird enough. But then you were in the group chats as a minor to JoJo Siwa. It says your name on that piece of evidence that Adam McIntyre posted. If I'm wrong, okay, I'm wrong. But Adam McIntyre, he showed the group chat with your name on there, okay? So... You're saying that people are lying about it. Well, you probably have to are saying that, you know, because I don't know, girl. Like, this is this is wrong to me. This is weird, okay? So, can somebody please explain to me why we are listening to this girl, number one? She is literally a dancer that can never get to the top of the pyramid on Dance Moms, okay? Congrats to you for having a fantastic YouTube career. No, I mean, like, literally, for all of us who were dancers as kids, our goal was to, like perform on Broadway or be part of the um, the um, ballet repertoire that they had uh, you know we wanted to be dancers or we wanted to open dance studios and this chick has all the money in the world she could totally fucking do that 
and she's playing around with fucking pedophiles. Crazy. For uh, for teaming up with every problematic YouTuber, okay? Like, that really worked to your advantage, that you teamed up with every problematic YouTuber. Of course you owe them favors. They built your career. They sold your bows for you, girl, okay? That $80 million you made was off the backs of these problematic people, okay? So can we, first of all, can somebody explain to me? And I know people are going to be like, you're going so hard for JoJo Siwa. She literally got in a podcast called JoJo Siwa Talks About Coin Ballinger. Do not come for me, okay? She wanted to defend this woman with these allegations. Yeah. JoJo Siwa could have said, I choose not to speak about it. Yes, I'm friendly with Coin Ballinger, and I'm not going to talk about it. She could have said that, okay? Mm -hmm. She didn't have to come out and victim blame and victim shame the, the people that have come out and shared their stories and say that they're liars and the internet has taken it and run with it. She didn't have to say that, okay? She didn't have to say these people are trying to cancel Colleen Ballinger, okay? That just feeds into the whole mentality, I think, in all honesty, because apparently Howie Mandel dipped into her uh, DMs, because they talk about this on the podcast, dipped into her DMs, she probably called Colleen Ballinger, and Colleen Ballinger was probably like, I think this would be a good idea. Because then you can come on there and you can defend me, and people are going to listen to you because you're somebody that has a lot of clout, all right? And they're already good GDs anyway. So JoJo Siwa, to me, is no different than a Cody Tyler, okay? She's just doing... Colleen Ballinger's dirty work for her, period, in the story, okay? So, number one, answer me this, okay? Puzzle me this. <laughs> Puzzle me this and let's play that game Operation, you know, buzz the sides, okay? I don't even know why I just said that. That was so stupid. <laughs> But puzzle me this. Number one, why are we listening to this girl? Okay, this girl that got famous off of Dance Moms? I mean, seriously? I mean, okay. She wasn't even that good of a dancer. I mean, do you guys remember... I mean, I felt bad for her because all the other girls made fun of her behind the scenes. I mean, where's Maddie Ziegler today? Nobody cares. <laughs> really, truth be told, I always felt bad for Chloe because Abby was so mean to her, right? Abby was mean to you, JoJo, and you sit there and talk about how you defend JoJo's or how to this day that you are still good duties with uh, Abby uh, Abby, what was her name? Abby Williams, because she built her career. Hold on a second. Let me read this article. I haven't read this article yet that my friend Nikki sent me. Um, Abby Leaf Miller says she's attracted to high school football players. Oh, this is another friend of yours, JoJo Seawall. Here it is on TMZ right here. Let's pull this up. Here it is on TMZ. Okay, 9-11-2023, uh, Abby Lee Miller clarifies high school crush comment. Abby Lee Miller just took to Instagram in an attempt to clear the air on her comment, saying she likes jocks, always has, and always will. She also says her kind of guy must be able to go. Who is asking Abby Lee Miller out on a date? I mean, girl, I wish you all the dates in the world, okay, but you're problematic as hell, too. Must go out to clubs, party in Vegas, rent ADA-accessible vans, and have a bank and business of their own. Are you in a bank account? Who's she going out to Vegas with? I want to know that. Why is she need? Why is a requirement that she, they must rent ADA accessible vans? I'm mean, like, I can understand that being a requirement for me because, like, I have difficulty walking. But like, what's going on? What's going on there? Girl, you getting you a, a VIP section Omni? Okay, obviously, she doesn't flat out say it, but there are, those are qualities high schoolers just can't possess. Abby again highlights all the right moves where Tom Cruise plays a high school student and mentions her own high school reunion is coming up soon. She'll probably be a real hit there. Abby says she hopes a high school hunk from her days will attend the reunion, but if not, she'll settle for Tom Brady as if. Girl, why would you want him? Abby Lee Miller went on a bizarre tangent claiming she's got a thing for high school football players in an interview that's raising plenty of eyebrows online. 57-year-old Abby took the odd stance on a re recent episode of Sophia Franklin, Sophia with an F podcast. At the very end of the show... I'm sorry, did he just say 57-year-old Abby? For real? That's what we're talking about here? W what the hell is happening right now? Uh, the two started talking about Tom Cruise, causing Abby to bring up his 1983 flick, All the Right Moves, about a high school football star. Abby says those guys are her downfall, claiming she's still into high school dudes oh today. Already a little odd, but Sophia, you, you think? <laughs> this is your good Judy? 
that you shout out all the time, JoJo Siwa. JoJo, you have a good judge of character, I'm telling you right now. Already a little odd, but Sophia notes that she's more into the coaches. Would be a great place to drop the conversation, right? I, 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 I guess. Yeah, oh right? I, 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 agree, I guess. Why not flat out ask her and say, you don't think there's something? Why are these people asking people on interviews and they are afraid to ask the real fucking questions? I'll tell you this right now, okay? People are like, Peter, you need to start a podcast because then you would ask these people the real fucking questions. Now, you know what? They wouldn't fucking come on my shows. You know why they wouldn't fucking come on my shows? Because they know that I would ask the real fucking questions. Because if Abby Lee Miller sat there on the couch, okay, next to me and said... Um, first of all, I'd say to her still to this day, why were you so cruel to Nia, okay? Like, that was uncalled for bullshit, okay? Kind of indirectly racist, if, I, if you want to know the truth of how I really feel about it, okay? Dress her up in that whole outfit that Holly went off about. I'll never forget Holly saying, she said something about, I'll kick you out. She goes, you can't fire me from this show, Abby. I lived, okay? I love Dance Mom Holly. And if she's problematic today and I don't know it, I disavow her, okay? I'm going to take Tana Mojo's job, right? But this is why nobody would come on my podcast as a guest, because they know Howie Mondale, Mandel and all these other fools are going to let him off and not ask the tough questions. If, if, if Abby Lee Miller said that, sitting on my couch, I'd look at her and go, Abby Lee Miller, why do you not think it is weird that you just said that there is something so problematic about saying that you are attracted to high school football players? Like, you don't think there's something problematic about that? I would ask those fucking questions. That's why people won't do interviews with me. Mm. Let's get that straight real quick. Manny, Laura. Yeah, but you're not even going in for the age question. 57 years old? And she's attracted to high school footballers? That's fucking gross, dude. That's disgusting. That's illegal. That's fucking... I can't even, dude. How did you miss that portion of the story? None of them would do interviews with me. Trust me, I asked, okay? They went on other people's interviews. They answered their questions. I'll ask those fucking questions. Come sit on my couch, JoJo Siwa. I'll ask you the questions, okay? Oh. I'll ask you the questions. Jeffree Star, come sit on my, my couch. I'll ask you the questions that everybody wants me to ask, okay? I'll ask all the questions of all the people. I don't give a fuck, okay? None of these people, they're all weak. None of these people want to ask the real questions. They all have their own agendas, right? Okay. It's a pretty wild thing to say, especially considering her former reality series, Dance Moms, is all about running a studio full of kids, and as you can imagine, she's been getting burnt online. Many have been pointing out the obviously disgusting implications of her comment. One person even pointed out the fact that she went back and clarified is crazy. By the way, Abby's new show, Madhouse, begins airing at the end of September, a series that takes young adult dancers and pins them against each other in the hopes of making it under her team. Who'd want to be on her team? So you get $10,000 per post on Instagram, then you become uh, world famous, like... Uh, like, uh, fucking JoJo Siwa. JoJo Siwa, listen, okay? There's one thing you will never be. You will never be worldwide like Candy from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Worldwide. Well, I guess she kind of is, isn't she? They went on world tours and stuff like that. Give a fuck. I like Candy better. I love Marlo Hampton. JoJo Siwa, I don't listen, okay? You need to figure your shit out. I know you're young, and I know you're 20 years old, and I know that you have uh, surrounded yourself the majority of your young life growing up with uh, people that are extremely problematic, and so you think that that's okay. This would maybe be a time to clear, clear yourself up, and... Um, Maybe try to step into the role of being a good LGBTQIA plus role model. I'm hoping that for you, okay? I'm hoping that for all of our youth because I think that, um, you know, we need some of that. When I was growing up, we had really great role models that came before me, you know, really great LGBTQIA plus role models that came before me um, that are now since dead. But I, I feel really blessed that I had those people, um, you know, when I was 20, 21, 22, when I started looking at history. And then, you know, we had people that came out, um, that later became problematic, like Ellen DeGeneres, but at the time weren't, you know? And, um, who's the dude that played, I can never remember his real name, who's the dude that played Doogie Howser? You know, that guy. Oh, and yeah. his husband, David Burke, I can remember his husband's name because he hit on my husband. But, um, true story, Dad, at the Super Bowl when I was in Indianapolis. Um, but what was his, what was his, uh, what's his husband's name? And that David Burke is, is good looking. Wasn't, isn't that his husband? But anyway, he is cute. He's good looking. But anyway, they're both, they're a cute couple. And I, lo I can't remember his name either, but like I saw him at, uh, we went to see 
the Rock of Ages musical in New York and uh, they had to escort him in and out just before the show started and right before we were released for intermission we, both times right he was the doogie hauser dude um he did like stand up and kind of wave at everybody I can't remember that guy's name. He's done a lot of work. He's done a lot of work. He's like a three name dude too, because like people in the, the eighties and nineties were like, I got to use all three names. I can't remember this guy's name. He, he played Doogie Hauser. I know who he's talking about other Halloween costumes they do with their kids and stuff like that. They're a nice couple, right? Like, can we not have, and I don't know if they're problematic, so maybe they are, but I, I don't follow them that closely. But can we have some, I mean, there's a lot of younger people that are coming out that are not problematic. Judge of Siwa, you have the opportunity to have a fantastic platform, okay? You were saying that you were scared to come out because of what you would receive. I'd be more scared about coming out about who you stand behind, okay? Because it's not a good look for your career, for your YouTube career, for them bows, okay? And for all of this it's you need to really rethink your stance all right and this isn't something that you can go, come back from like i said in two weeks and go well i changed my opinion because it doesn't go the way that you want it to go because it's not okay the internet is letting you have it right now for defending colin ballinger this isn't something you can come out two weeks later and go well i really thought about this i mean it didn't serve me in any way well three and a half months later this uh to unfollow Colin Ballinger. It didn't follow Joey Graceffa well. It didn't do Daniel Prada well. Okay, it's hiding is what it is. So you can't come out in two weeks and say, well, now that I've, like, reevaluated things, yeah, I can't continue to follow Colin Ballinger. We're going to still know that y'all are good Judy's and you're just saying it to save ass, okay? The evidence has been out there for a long time. And you chose to side on her side. And it's not a great look, okay? And I'm not even disappointed in you because I don't even really think that highly of you, okay? Neil Patrick Harris. Right? That was his name. I think it was Neil Patrick Harris. You're just some gal that got lucky in a reality show, period, in the story, okay? <laughs> period, okay? What happened to Heather from the real world? I liked her. Anyway, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.